you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When we first started having church together, we've uh, we've always had this in mind that like this is like the Father's living room right here. We're all in God's living room, and we're living life. That's what He gave us life. Uh, so kids being in church and all that, that's just part of life, you know. When uh, we get together and and so don't don't feel bad if you have to stand up, walk the kids. It's not disruptive, you know. So don't worry about that. We want the kids to be in here, and usually on special occasions we have the kids stay in church too. We do have a little class in the back, and uh, we're working on a multi-purpose building. Got a fundraiser going on right now for that to put on the back of the building. We want to have more room for kids. Amen. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles with you today, or you can follow along up here, it's uh, John. Chapter 19, John chapter 19 and verse 17. Before there's a resurrection, there had to be a crucifixion. You couldn't have one without the other. Uh, gardening season is upon us. I've been watching a bunch of gardening videos. I'm getting ready. Uh, Donna's already got a bunch of little seedlings growing and I'm anxious to put them in the ground. But in order for us to have the plant and the fruit that we desire, the plant is going to die and will one day and then the seeds are going to fall, right? They're going to, they're going to look like they're dead. They're going to look like there's no way you can get anything from this little dried up seed. But it's amazing that that seed planted into the good fertile ground will produce another plant. And then you grow this big old plant, right? And then you get all this fruit on it, and you get one seed back, right? Uh, have you ever opened a watermelon? How many seeds are in there? Wow, this is the amazing thing that God does. He promotes life. He takes that little dead seed, and then all of a sudden you have all this fruit, and then all the seed to plant again and do it all over again. God is about life. He's about giving. And that's what happens in this story right here. Jesus is the seed that made every Christian's life possible. He is that seed. So he had to go. He had to go to the cross. It was necessary. Amen. Verse 17 says, And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place, the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, Jesus in the center. He had to die. That is the plan and purpose of God. There's no other way around it. I know sometimes I get to thinking, I say, well, why do we have to go through all this? You know, God is, he's a good father. Why don't he just make a way for us in a different way? No. This is what he decided. I don't understand why it's decided this way. But God is smarter than me, I guarantee you. He's probably smarter than you, right? <laughs> He knows what's going on, and He knows this is the purpose. The seed had to go into the ground. Jesus had to die in order to make the way for us to live. That's just the way it works. He paid the price for our sins so that we don't have to pay the price. Isn't that amazing? He paid that price. I know sometimes we do things, and I'm a... I was a little bit rebellious in, in my in my younger years. And I'm already a Christian, you know. I got out of the Air Force and I'm back here in Clovis living here. And, and in the Air Force, they made me wear a seatbelt. We had to. I mean, we were ordered to wear a seatbelt. So when we're driving anywhere, we had to wear a seatbelt. So when I got out, I wanted to express my freedom, right? So I wouldn't wear my seatbelt. <laughs> so I, I went around places, you know, around town and stuff. And sure enough, I got pulled over. Not just once, but twice. And finally, by the third time I paid a fine of $200, I finally learned to wear a seatbelt. You know? <laughs> I had to pay the price. You know, uh, The judge did not give me any lenient sentence. He made me pay the full price because it was my fault. I could have decided and said, just put that thing on, but no, I rebelled. Now, what about you? Have you rebelled? Have you done something that is wrong? That you know that is wrong? Yeah, you have. You know why I know? Because all have sinned. And all means all. 
Every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We have made our mistakes. Every one of us. And if you want to, you can pay the price. Like me. I didn't wear a seatbelt. I had to pay the price. Half week's worth of wages. I had to go and pay the judge. You know, because I was being foolish. You know. We don't have to pay that price. Jesus paid the price for us. He made the way for us so we don't have to go in the grave and suffer death like that. He made the way. So I hope that today, especially on Easter, that you recognize what the gift of God truly is. He wants to relieve you. Do you remember that time that you said something so bad, maybe to a parent? Or a grandparent? Or a good friend? Or a teacher or something? And then afterwards you felt terrible about it? Because you made that choice to do something so terrible, you know? Man, that's a heavy burden. When you hurt someone else's feeling, that's a heavy burden. You know? and, and you can carry it if you want, but you don't have to. We can be forgiven. We can be forgiven from our God, and He can wash away that sin and give us life. That's what He wants to do for us. So I hope that you'll recognize that today, especially during this Easter service. Now, if you would turn with me over here to... Uh, John chapter 20, and I'm going to read the, the story of Easter. Verse 1. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter Therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen clothes laying there and the anchorship that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in its place by itself. And then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. No one in humanity's history has ever understood this to be a reality, where a person can die and be raised from the dead. Only the power of God is able to do this. Do you remember the story of Lazarus? Here, our fellow human had died. I mean, there was no life in him. He had died. They went through the funeral procession and they put him in the grave. He was dead. There's no way possible in humanity's way of thinking that that person would ever live again. Right? We can't comprehend that. Yet Jesus... Jesus called him from the grave and he lived. There is life after death. You can gamble if you want. And you can live life however you want. You can disown God and do your own thing. You're allowed to do that. God gives you that free choice. But you're going to miss out. Because there is life beyond what we have right here. And you think about it. Think ten years ago. What was going in your, on in your life 10 years ago? And then, bam, all of a sudden, you're right here. 10 years just flew by. It's going to be the same way going forward. There's going to be a time that we're going to have to give an account for this life. Do you want to face God the Father to try to make excuses why you kept rejecting Him? Or do you want to run to Him and just hug Him? It's your choice. You get to decide that right here, right now. You can keep rebelling, doing your own thing in your own way. Or you can humble yourself in your presence of your God and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. If you'll do that, all sin is wiped away. You get a new chance at life. That's what he's doing for us. Jesus made it possible to go from that sinful lifestyle that we had before and live a brand new sinless life. You think it's impossible to live a sinless life? It's not possible. Think about it, Christians. 
when you were lost in sin, how much did you sin then? A whole bunch, huh? <laughs> yeah. Didn't even think about it. You would just sin because it was a thing to do. But now, how much less do you sin? Way less. Huh? So we can live sin less lives. Becoming a Christian doesn't make us perfect, but it gets us a little bit closer. It gets us a little bit closer. And with the less sin that you have, the better you feel. So you start getting life and life more abundant. See what God is trying to do to us? He's not trying to take away your fun. No. He wants to give you more fun. <laughs> he wants to give you more joy, more peace, more love. He's trying to add to your life. If we would just stop for a little bit and talk to our Father and make things right with Him, we can start to see the benefits that God has in store for us. There are great benefits. We get to be born again. We're, we're living in sin and then we can die to ourselves like Jesus died and was buried. We go through the same process. One example that we have is we have our tank back here and when we do water baptism, what we're symbolizing is a person is dying and we're taking them down under the water like symbolically into a grave. They are dying to their old selves. And then guess what? We bring them up every time. We haven't lost one yet. <laughs> we bring them up. And because that celebrates the new life that they have in Christ now. God loves us so much. He wants us to give us a new life. Maybe you need a second chance. Third chance. Fourth chance. <laughs> yeah, maybe you need that. God will give it to you. He's offering it to you with open arms. He loves you so much. He doesn't want you to miss eternity with Him. Heaven is huge. It's got room for all of us. He wants us to live forever with Him. But guess what? It starts here. Thy will be done. Where? On earth. As it is where? In heaven. Heaven starts right here. You can have a piece of heaven right here and right now. All you have to do is accept what God has done for you. Jesus, the ultimate offering and sacrifice for our sins. He paid the price. He rose from the dead. He has given us the opportunity to receive that fact into our own lives. He offers it to us as a gift. If we but believe, that's all, that's all we have to do. We just have to believe. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to struggle to be so good and holy that He accepts us. We'll never get there. None of us will get there. We're not good enough. You know how we are. We have a greater tendency to do something wrong than we do to something right. We all have it. So we're never going to make it by trying to make it on our own. We can only get there by the grace of God. We have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's what makes the difference. He wants to make that difference in your life today. He wants to make that difference in my life. Each and every day, He wants to be a part of your life. He wants you to experience what Jesus experienced. He came alive. His body was dead. His, his blood was not pumping. Uh, the decomposing process had already started. But yet God raised him from the dead. When we choose sin, when we choose the wrong way, and you know what the wrong way is. When we choose that, isn't it terrible? Nothing goes right. Everything goes wrong. We can't accomplish nothing. Just, just bad thing after bad thing. We taste one good little thing and then bad, 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 bad. God wants to turn that around for us. He wants us to have good, 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 good. Well, we have struggles. We'll have a bad time once in a while. But He'll work that together for our good. You see how good God is? Give Him a chance. Jesus actually was here it's documented. There's more evidence to the fact that he was here than Benjamin Franklin. Anybody know Benjamin Franklin? Yeah, you do. There's more proof that Jesus was here. That he lived on this earth. That he died the cruel death. It was documented. The resurrection documented throughout the centuries. He came and he gave his life for you. 
I hope that this morning that you'll uh, remember this sermon this morning. And when you lay your head tonight on your pillow and everything quiets down, it's just like you and God. Just you. Nobody else hears you. Just you and God. Talk to Him. Call Him your Father because He is your Father. You may think, no, I've run away. I've disowned Him. We don't know. Yeah, no, He always loves you. My, matter of fact, He might love you a little more than He loves me because He's got me. <laughs> he wants you. <laughs> yeah. He wants to get you into the family. He wants you to come. Don't worry about what you got to do. Just come. Everything else will work out on its own. God will be with you every step of the way. You're not about to lose anything. You're about to gain so much more. I hope and pray that as you reflect on the Easter story, that you'll recognize it was all for you. All done for you. So please, consider this. We're going to continue to pray for you if you've never made that commitment that you will this day. We know this video is going out you know, on the internet, Facebook and stuff like that. So there may be some out there that are hearing this message that are later today. We're praying for you. We're believing God's going to get this message to you to liberate you from the bondage of sin and give you life and life more abundant. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. And Father, you are an amazing God. Thank you for the reminder that you give us during this Easter season. As, we be able, as we're able to reflect back on the suffering that our Lord and Savior did, but also on the triumph of the, of the resurrection on that Sunday morning, Father. We thank you that, that we have a, a tremendous hope now, <coughs> that even though in this body we're going to die one day, Father, but we know that's not the end. We're just barely getting planted, and real life is going to begin after this life, Father. We, we thank you for that. We also thank you, Father God, that you give us a taste of heaven right here on this earth. As we, uh, as we live this life, we raise our families, we, we enjoy our church fellowship and our family and, and all that. Father, we thank you for that. We know that that's a taste of heaven. And Father, let that taste be strong in our, our minds and hearts that we would desire eternal life with you. We love you so much, Father. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We have snacks over here, if you would. You just come over and have coffee and stuff, too. So you're welcome to hang around with you.